Hey y'all, Miso here with Miso Making It. Welcome to my kitchen. And today it's all about the very best southern fried corn. Here in my pan I'm, I'm browning some pork fat or strictly. Um, and I've got some corn that I'm going to get ready to uh, put in the fat that is rendered off of the pork. I have here, this is I think $2.98 that I paid for this corn, and I have five ears of corn. Now that's going to make plenty, because I'm cooking for, I'm expecting five people, so I think that's going to be enough. So I'm just getting my corn out of the container, and I'm going to begin to, uh, actually this this is called shucking shucking the corn so I'm shucking and these are sears and I'm just taking these sears off just by taking my hand and twisting it around on the ear of corn I don't know it's my belief that you can never get all of them off but you just twist and twist and you get as much off as you can so here I'm just speeding up so that you don't have to watch me do all of that now the corn that you just saw has uh, some places where there is no corn. It's underdeveloped, but nothing is wrong with it. It's not brown. It's not black. It's not, it doesn't have any worm in it. It's just underdeveloped, and so it's a little bit less corn on that one. Let's go ahead and get these guys washed up. Now as I'm washing them, I'm also taking my hands, and I'm moving them all over and twisting around on the cobs. That's to get that little... Harry sear off, but I'm just watch it, washing. It's in my sink now. Okay, here I have my corn. You still see the two that I, I was talking about that have uh, underdeveloped corn kernels. Okay, I have this little tiny bowl, and I'm putting it inside my big bowl because I actually want to elevate my ears of corn while I cut them, and that will help me to be able to cut them. So what I'm doing is just cutting the corn off, and look, that some people throw it away at this point, but that's where all your milk is. I'm taking the blade end of my knife, and I am scraping that cob from end to end, and that milk is coming out into my bowl. And that is what's going to give creaminess in this corn. And, I, and I, I, like I said, some people throw it away. Never, never, never throw it away. So here I've got this speeded up just so you can see the process. But you don't have to uh, stay with me the entire time and uh, watch me do it one by one. Just scraping that cob here, just scraping. And here I go again, cutting it off, all the corn, scrape, scrape, scrape. All right, almost done and ready to get this on the stove. This is a quick process. Once you get it cut off the ears, it is very quick. You don't cook corn very long. When you get this bowl out, and just kind of get all the corn off the bowl, because you know I like to use every drop. Yep, make the corn, which is going to go. It's a very quick process. It won't take long at all. You see here in the pan where I put the uh, pork fat, um, strickling, uh, bacon, whatever you want to call it. I put this in the pan, and you can see that I just slowly let it brown. I had it on very low heat, and I just let that brown and get crispy. And uh, actually, I'm going to get this out of the pan because a lot of people, what they do is they'll crumble this or put, put this back on top of the corn. And so whoever the lucky guy is that gets to eat it, somebody will eat it. So that's why it's put back on top of the corn. So you see now I have gotten the bacon or the pork fat out of the pan. And I'm going to put it on a stick of butter minus a tablespoon. And that's only because I um, use that tablespoon for something else. That's the only reason. So we're going to get that butter milk. Let me make sure that I get my hands on both of these parts because I don't want the butter to brown. In the bowl, the 
with my corn. You see that I have waiting beside the corn some salt. This is just a um, half a cup of um, milk. This is three tablespoons of flour and one teaspoon of sugar here. And the sugar is certainly optional. It depends on what time of year it is that I'm getting my corn, that I use sugar or not in the fall. In the winter, you still can find corn in your grocery store. But um, I um, put sugar in it at that time. But in the summer, when it's so sweet and so beautiful, you don't need to put sugar in it then. It's already sweet. So let's go ahead and give a few sprinkles of our salt. Let's go ahead and sprinkle our um, Corn meal and our flour, and this is just self rising flour. Please don't put corn meal in this. <laughs> um, this is just self rising flour. I'm gonna get our sugar in with the sugar that was just one teaspoon of sugar, and now I'm gonna pour the milk over this. And this, by the way, is canned milk, but it doesn't, in no, by no means, does it have to be canned milk. You can use uh, refrigerated milk. In fact, I would have used a refrigerated milk, but I think I uh, am on the refrigerator milk right now. And um, I didn't go out to the garage and look at my refrigerator out there. I may have some milk, but I just didn't check it. So the canned milk was handy. It was already opened. I need to use it up, so I just use the canned milk. So you see the consistency we have here. And that flour is going to make this thicker. And so that's what's getting creamy. So that's what's going to give it its creamy taste. It's just a little bit hmm, of that hole there. Not the hole, but that green. I don't even know what you call that, so I won't try to name it today. So let's go ahead and get it in the pan. The butter's melted, so we just want to get the corn right in. Every drop, every drop miso. That's my name, I guess. So I'm gonna get the heat back up to medium. And begin to let it cook. So, we'll check on it in just a second. This won't have to cook the entire time. It'll be about eight minutes. So this won't have to cook very long. So I'm gonna stop here, let this begin to come up to medium heat. So one thing I forgot to show you that is very important to me, and that is fresh uh, cracked pepper. So I'm going to put, this is just black pepper, but it's, I'm going to just put, I like a lot, so I would say, you know, a few turns, but I would say in measurement, this is probably, oh, you know, maybe a sixteenth of a, of a teaspoon, very little, but then a lot, you know. So if you don't have the fresh, um, pepper, then um, you can go ahead and use just some um, regular store-bought pepper that is already ground. Um, I wouldn't use as much as that on that on just a few sprinkles. Um, if you don't have a pepper mill, get you one, invest in it. I think you'll be glad that you did. Um, so, because it makes, fresh pepper makes all the difference in the world uh, with your food, especially if you're eating things that are raw, like salads, that fresh pepper just, it's just, it really enhances it. And even in your cooking, the fresh pepper makes a big difference. I just wanted to pop back in here just to show you what you're going to be working with. You see this, um, this, um, in fact, you, you now you see this piece right here? This is a little bit brown because it's stuck to the pan a little bit. So you want to stay close to yours and keep it stirred because because of the flour in there, all the starch, it will stick quite easily even though you had the butter in it. Now, I like a few round pieces in mine, but that's for home. If I'm serving it to guests, I don't do that because, you know, they may think that you accidentally almost burned your corn, but I like that little brown. It's kind of a... Kind of a, it's not crunchy at all, but it's kind of a, um, I don't know, I don't know, kind of a, a chewy taste. And I like it mixed throughout my corn, but you can see how thick it's getting, and you can see why this is called cream corn, because if it was not, the kernels would stand apart, 
It's the combination of the, the milk and the um, flour and the milk that I scraped from the cob when I, you saw me scraping the cob. It's the combination of that, you know, um, that milk from the cob is important in terms of making it creamy. And uh, then you put a little of um, your own milk from the refrigerator or a can in there. And then your uh, flour. And that's what's going to make it creamy. I wish you could taste this, guys. This is going to be oh, marvelous. This will make you, uh, now it's a bit fattening with the butter that I put in. And um, of course, if you wanted to, you could tone it down. Not put you could put maybe a half a stick of butter in this, you know, this much corn, maybe even less. Uh, you could not put butter at all. You could use uh, corn oil or vegetable oil, which um, you know you're gonna lose that buttery taste. But it can be done. You can put a lot less in it. And uh, but you're gonna need your flour if you want this to be true southern. Uh, fried corn. If you want to be true southern fried corn, you're going to need your butter too. So this is almost done. So you can see it didn't take but a few minutes. But look what you have. You see the thickness there. Mm -hmm. I'd say about the um, consistency of oatmeal. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to let this cook one more minute and then I'm going to get it up and put it in a um, serving dish and we'll be getting ready to eat. So here, guys, is my finished product. Um, I have the corn in the bowl. Doesn't it look delicious and yummy? You can see the butter, which is so good. Uh, like I said, if you want less butter, just, just put less butter in yours. Here I've cooked the, the meat, the um, strigoline, and I've just laid it on top of the um, corn. Um, just to show you how it, this, it's done in the South, the old time South, um, even what they would do if you're having a little guest or even if not, they would cook more of this, of course, more of the meat. And uh, they would take the meat after the meat's done. Instead of serving it back on the corn, they would just put it in a platter or a plate beside the corn and that would just have all the meat in it and the ones that wanted the meat would get it and the ones that did not could leave it so it was served that way today i'm not doing all that because we don't eat it like that and so i just wanted you guys to see how it's done here it is served up this is just some in the bowl same thing same difference i can't wait i'm going to go ahead and get me a taste of this and even though it's so hot but i just can't wait mm. Mm. Mmm. Oh my. Oh my. Guys. Oh. Mmm. It is so good. I just. Mm, you just got to try this. This is so good. <clears throat> what you want to be careful is that you don't cook it too long. Like I say, the entire process should not be more than eight or ten minutes. If your family is larger, of course you want to use more um, corn than I did. Mmm. But. I'm not cooking for such a big group today, and so um, I didn't cook that much. I only used four, I believe it was, no, five ears of corn. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go eat this corn. Bye. Looky, looky, I've plated this up, added a few sides, and an entree. Ah, oh, looking good. I wish you guys could smell this. I wish you could taste it. Here I have barbecue country style, turnip greens, and squash casserole. I've also made some fried green tomatoes. And here is that corn. The corn is the star of this plate. Mmm, it's so good. This plate is for Big Daddy, showing him some love with good old comfort food, southern style. Mm -mm. He's going to love it. Did I get a big kiss today? Guys, thank you for coming by my channel to see what I'm cooking today. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope you come back. Try this recipe for your big daddy or those little ones and see if you don't get some kisses too.